Welcome to Electra Online. Now here is a very interesting and kind of confusing JE advanced problem. Now this deals with this deals with electricity and magnetism and especially with the forces that have to do with the magnetic fields. So we'll call them magnetic forces. So let's read the problem and see if we can figure out which of these statements is indeed correct. A light disk made of aluminum, so I have a, an aluminum disk that's not very heavy, that's what they're saying, and it's made of a non-magnetic material, cannot be magnetized such as iron can, and it's kept horizontally and is free to rotate about its axis as shown, and they do give you a little diagram that looks like that. A strong magnet is held vertically at a point above the disk, you can see with the north down and the south up, and it's, uh, it's away from the axis and now they revolve the magnet about the disk away from the axis and the disk will do one or perhaps more of these things but I believe this is in a section where only one of the four answers can be correct so it's not a choice of which of the four I think it's one of the four can be correct so which of those four is correct so I found myself trying to figure this out and I found that it was kind of difficult to, to, to try and determine what exactly is going on. So first of all I thought well let's draw the magnetic field and the magnetic fields they will always emanate from the north so you can think of the field going like this and then eventually comes around and will go into the south like that. So I looked at this portion right here and now imagine that this magnetic field is traveling in this direction so it would be clockwise direction when we look from the top and so we can then also assume that there's charges inside the disk that are free to move and let's just call them positive charges of course we know it's really negative charges but let's just call them positive charges in the traditional sense of E and M and so relative to the charges the charges appear to be moving towards the magnetic field so then when I use the right hand rule, I take my fingers, I point them in the direction of the motion of the charges, I then point my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field and I see the force pushing the charges inward. So what's happening here is by moving the, magnetic, the magnet around, I'm causing a flow of charges and the charges appear to be flowing inward based upon what I understand here. Of course, those charges would normally not do that on their own. They need to be pushed there and there's going to need to be some electromotive force. And the electromotive force is, of course, caused by the motion of the magnet. So that causes electromotive force, basically a, a potential difference, that pushes the charges. And they're not free to move on their own. They wouldn't just naturally move on their own. They need to be pushed. So they're going to put up a resistive force, right? They're going to push back. All right, so that's kind of the concept I have in mind. It's not unlike this concept as follows. Let's say that we have a wire like this. Let's say that we have a bar and uh, let's say that there's a magnetic field that points out of the, uh, uh, that goes through the loop and let's say that's the magnetic field and let's say that we push, we call, we have a force so we push the bar to the right causing the bar to move to the right meaning that the, the, the loop gets bigger and so the flux is increasing. If we know that when we cause the flux to increase in the loop, we set up an electromotive force, an e and uh, voltage, an induced voltage that induces a current that causes a magnetic field that opposes a change. So it's going to cause a field, an induced magnetic field in the opposite direction, try to prevent this from increasing. And of course, then when we use the right hand rule, we can see that the current will then flow in a clockwise direction. And we then also realize that the current going through the bar interfering with the magnetic field will experience a force in this direction. So that there will be a force in the opposite direction. So what we've known all along with this type of example is that whenever we, we use a, a force to push against the bar to cause a change in the magnetic flux through a loop that sets up a current, that sets up a magnetic field that opposes the change which causes a force pushing in the opposite direction so there's always a force in the opposite direction from the force that makes things happen and I believe that the same principle must apply there one way or the other 
So let's now read some of these answers. I'm going to go to answer C and D first because I think those are the easy, to, the easy ones to pick off. I do believe the disc will rotate. Now the question is, will it rotate in the same direction or will it rotate in the opposite direction? What is really going on here? So let's, let's try to figure this out. So first of all, the two answers C and D say it will not rotate. But C also says that the temperature will remain unchanged. Well, that's kind of strange because when I'm forcing a current through anything, there's some resistance there. And when there's a resistance, there will be heat loss or heat generated, which will then go into the disk and the disk, the temperature of the disk will increase. So I definitely would say that C doesn't appear to be possible. How about D? It doesn't rotate, but its temperature will slowly rise. So if I cause something to happen that make the temperature rise, that means I need to push against something. And the magnet going around is the push, right? Or my hand holding the magnet is, is pushing the magnet. And so I'm causing something to happen to the disk that will make the temperature rise. But then there must be an opposition force, Newton's third law. Whenever there's an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So I would say that the reaction force will cause the disc to rotate. So the disc not rotating again doesn't appear to be a plausible answer. So now we're just simply down to the two possible answers, A or B. The disc will rotate, but will it rotate in the same direction or will it rotate in the opposite direction? Hmm. Hmm. So the answer is, if I push my magnet this way, will it cause the disc to rotate in the same direction? Or when I push my magnet this way, will it cause the disc to rotate in this direction? So again, I go from the principle that we've learned here, where if I push against something, that disc will push back. So what I'm imagining is if I'm pushing the magnet this way, I cause something to happen in the disc, the current flow, that means that the disc will push back. Now the disc is pushing back, but the disc is free to rotate. It's not sitting on the dirt or on the floor. It's, so the disc is pushing this way that will cause the disc to move this way, right? So the disc is pushing back in the opposite direction of the motion of the magnet, which will cause the disc to rotate in the same direction. So same direction, that means B, opposite direction, doesn't seem to be possible. So therefore, my choice is B. And again, the idea is this, that if I'm on roller skates and I push against the wall, the wall pushes back against me. So now the wall pushes against me. I'm pushing back against the wall. And since I'm not on a sturdy floor, I'm on, on wheels, I will go backwards in the same direction as the push of the wall. So the same thing here, the magnet pushes, the disc pushes back, but there's nothing to hold the disc back, so the disc will begin to rotate in the same direction. So this is something you could probably think through in a matter of a couple of minutes. I took my time to explain it, but the basic principle is Newton's third law, and the idea here that whenever you induce uh, voltage that induces a current that will set up a magnetic field opposing the change, meaning it will push back. Newton's third law says equal and opposite reaction. As it pushes back, you'll then get pushed back in the same direction as the direction of the force that pushes you. And that is how we do that. Although it did throw me for a loop at first when I was trying to figure out what physically is happening in the disk, and then instead of just trying to try to tie that to which direction the forces are, I just went back to basic principles. Basic principles is there's a force pushing, Newton's third law, and that's basically all you have to think about. <laughs> it's the correct answer, by the way. <laughs> I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs>